have my father's script of I'm all right, Jack, found this time in a plastic bag in the garage. He just left things all around the house. And clearly my dad was obviously encouraged to come up with variations of the stuttering clot line or was just pushing his luck and was looking to get more lines. So written in biro on a separate piece of blue paper, there was, you're nothing but a collaborator. You silly clot. Say that again. He's a bit of a controversial character, ain't he? And if you ask me, he's just a feather in his own nest. You man. But he hasn't started yet. Hasn't started yet? Then what's he doing on a f f f forklift truck? Incidentally, for those of you who play Spot the Continuity Error, there are two scenes which my dad is in where he's with all the shop stewards, Peter Sellers, Cardrew Robinson, John Comer, etc., and they're complaining about Stanley Windrush in Carmichael's behavior, showing them all up as he works more quickly than all the other workers. First, they complain to Terry Thomas, yeah, so cha. then to Michael Goodliff. There's a marching scene in between the two when the team of shop stewards go from one office to another. My dad's not in that marching scene. He had a severe cold. And Roy Bolting, the director producer, was very posh indeed, and swore an enormous amount, which somehow made it okay, I don't quite understand that, said, told him, don't come in, kiddie, for God's sake, you'll contaminate all of us. So he took his advice and stayed in bed, missing the marching shot. Have a look at that. I noticed that when I first saw it, I was about nine. I said, Daddy, you're not in that. It's a bit, a bit advanced. Anyway, Treasure Island, another film, directed by Byron Haskin. Aha, Jim Ladd. The Treasure of Monte Cristo, directed by Monty Herman and Roy Baker, later to be in charge of The Saint, which, of course, my dad was in. The Iron Maiden, which I'm in, actually, playing his son with the immortal line, Hello, Dad. Mum's after you. <laughs> Incidentally, one of the other children in the film was the original Milky Bar Kid. Milky Bar's a Rob Bay. Milky Bar Kid, he's strong and tough, and only the best is good enough, etc. That was directed by Gerald Thomas, the, the film, not the ad. Anyway, more films. Okay. Too Many Crooks, Radio Cab Murders, Pool of London, Seven Days to Noon, Hasty Heart, Forbidden, Flood Tide, Badgers Green, Once Jolly Swagman, Trent's Last Case, Appointment in London, Death Goes to School, Father Brown, The Greater Mass Experiment, Cocker Shell Heroes, Tiger in the Smoke, Barnacle Bill, Dunkirk, Up the Creek, Further Up the Creek, I Was Monty Stubble, Hand of the Baskervilles, Follow That Horse, There Was a Crooked Man, House in Marsh Road, Island of Terror, The Projected Man, Smashing Time, Gold is Where You Find It, Killing of Sister George, Moon Zero Two, Step Don't Sun Ride Again, Dad's Army, Up the Chastity Belt, Yesterday's Hero, The Mirror Cracked, Only Another 180 to go. <laughs> Hey, don't worry, I won't read them all out, but I can't resist it. It's a phenomenal amount of work. Small Back Room, directed by Michael Powell. Hornblow, directed by the legendary Raoul Walsh, who had made 138 films himself, including The Thief of Baghdad, starring Douglas Fairbanks. They Who Dare, directed by Lewis Milestone, who everyone called Millie, who directed All Quiet on the Western Front. The Four Feathers, co-directed by Zoltan Corder, known as Zolly, who'd been the original director of the 1934 Feathers. Sink the Bismarck, directed by Lewis Gilbert, who of course directed Reach for the Sky and Live Twice, Alfie, Educating Rita, and Albert R.N. that Sam was in, and the wonderfully named 1953 film film Kosh Boy, which he wasn't in. <laughs> but you know where you are with a film with a title like that. It's not going to be posh, is it? It's not going to be Hello, Kosh Boy. It's going to be Kosh Boy. Uh, here are some of my dad's Ealing films, Captive Hearts, Saraban for Dead Lovers, Scott of the Antarctic, Friends, Blue Lamp, Passport to Pimlico, For Them That Trespass, Chance of a Lifetime, The Magnet, Cage of Gold, Secret People, Cruel Sea, Clipfield Thunderbolt, and The Long Arm. That's enough films, I think. But... Here are some of the actors he worked with in films, not telly. There are thousands more of them. Ronald Reagan, William Holden, Donald Wolfe, Virginia Wigginer, Kenneth Moore, Carol Friend, George Roth, Derek Bogard, who incidentally is my godfather, but uh, I only met him once, so he didn't take his duties as a godfather very seriously. Um, Gordon Jackson, Kenneth Williams, Harry Seacombe, Peter Sellers, Spike Milligan, Jack Hawkins, Ori Heaven, Anne Todd, Michael Wiley, John Allen, Peter Finch, John Lemusurio, Patrick McGowan, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Lawrence Harvey, James Robertson, Justice, Jack Warner, Richard Wattis, Jimmy Handley, Trevor Howard, John Gregson, Anthony Steele, Donald Sindler, Bernard Miles, Ali Guinness, Flora Robson, Norman Wisdom, Robert Morley, Lionel Jeffers, Raymond Land, David. Thomason, Terry Thomas, Bernard Bressel, Sid James, Ian McShane, Richard Attenborough, Donald Pleasant, Robert Newton, Peter Cushing, Cliff Robertson, to name but an exalted few. Now, I say he made... Thank you very much for that clap. Thank you. Thank you. He'd play crooks, but they weren't normally dreadful crooks. They didn't have... They weren't black-hearted crooks. They were... They nearly always had a heart of gold, um, uh, which, in fact, was reflected uh, in subsequent performances, like in, in Dixon of Doc Green, the, the televisions, where he was in... He was in every single series of Dixon of Doc Green as a um, uh, a crook who'd uh, who'd um, gone wrong in some way, but actually was a, was a, a, a jolly good chap. Um, that was always what was written for him, and I think that was because of his unbelievably sympathetic nature. Whether this was a consequence of he seemed to con he seemed to to transmit that to the audience as being a um, 
uh, a sweet man, which he was, um, whether that was a consequence of having seen the deprivation of five years in a prisoner of war camp, uh, which I, th I think contributed hugely to the way that he was, he, he, how, he, how he came across as an actor. There was something in him that was um, unbelievably sympathetic. And people used to say to me, we, we love your father. There was a, there was a reality about him. He was, he's a, a, a re they used to say, real, very real bloke, your dad, people used to say. And I'd, I'd, uh, it's very difficult for me in my, in my, my youth, because you're sort of, you know, you're just, you go, oh, yeah, all right, that's, that's interesting. Because, you know, it's, it's his job. And uh, um, it, it's, it's, only, it's only subsequently that I've been able to appreciate his, his, uh, his, em his empathy, really, and his skills.